What's up guys? Welcome to my channel. I am Jen. I am a 50 something single mom. My channel is mostly videos about myself and my life and whatever I'm up to. I do some unboxings. I do some grocery hauls, some retail store walkthroughs and just various like vlogs and videos from home about my life and whatever it is I'm up to. So this week's video, what I'm going to talk about is stores that are closed and don't exist anymore. So I recently saw a Twitter thread that I thought was interesting. Somebody posted, age yourself, age yourself, uh, <laughs> um, by naming stores that you remember that don't exist anymore. So this whole thread was so much fun to read through. I got such a kick out of it and there was so much nostalgia and everybody in the thread naming all of the stores that they remember that aren't closed now. And um, I had so much fun just going down memory lane and remembering all these stores from like days of yore that aren't open <laughs> anymore. Um, and it was really fun to read. So a lot of them were like, well, you know, the Woolworths, the Caldor, those type of places, the old timey department stores, I call them, <laughs> that are closed now. Um, John Wanamaker's, uh, you know, Belk. I think actually Belk is still open. Um, the ones in my area were like Filene's, Jordan Marsh, G Fox. But um, I wrote down a list actually of some that I loved and that I remember. So I'm going to try to stick to the nationwide ones that everybody will remember. We all have our regional stores in our areas where we live that we love that closed, of course. And my area, one of the beloved stores that closed was Benny's. Uh, another one was Ann and Hope. But I'm going to stick to talking about ones that I think are a little bit more national that everybody will remember. So I'm going to try to add in photos where I can to represent some of the clothing and furniture that I bought at some of these stores that I'm going to be mentioning. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about like actual print photos from my photo albums. So I do apologize if the quality is not great, but I am going to try to insert a few photos in just for laughs so you can see like some of the clothing that I'm talking about. So the first store that closed that no longer exists, it has to be at the top of my list, is one of my all-time ultimate favorite favorites, so near and dear to my heart. It is Pier 1. Pier 1 Imports, which I shopped at for decades, really like forever. I started shopping at this store going way, way back to when I was in high school. And I used to go there and buy little knickknacks for my teenage bedroom back in the day in the 80s. I don't know if anyone else remembers this, but Pier 1 used to sell clothes. They had shoes. I had bought myself um, some tops there. I had a couple of um, blouses. I had a skirt. I used to buy the little ballet flats with the embroidery on them. When I first moved out of my parents' house and got my first apartment, when I was like a young 20-something, I furnished my house nearly completely with things from Pier 1. My couch was from Pier 1. My coffee table was from Pier 1. All of the plates and mugs and bowls I bought for my kitchen, all of my tableware was from there. I had cloth napkins. I had napkin rings. My kitchen table was from there. I could go on and on. There was a point where if you walked into my apartment when I was in my 20s, the entire place was literally from Pier 1. And actually, some of those things I still have to this day. In fact, right here, these cloth napkins, which are quite faded, these were originally purchased at Pier 1. These are some pasta bowls that I bought at Pier 1. These are so old and you can see there's a crack in them, but I will never throw these away. I absolutely love them. I had this entire set. At one time I had mugs and salad plates and lunch plates and everything that matched it. I don't have all the pieces anymore because they just broke over time and I replaced them with new things. But um, now I will never get rid of these, especially because Pier 1 is closed and I can't replace them anymore. They were a really good place to get glasses and any tableware. This store only just closed a couple of years ago and when they were closing I went there to try to grab a bunch of things on clearance as they were emptying out their inventory. I did buy some more cloth napkins. At the time I was shopping around the time that they were closing a lot of Easter decor was out. 
I bought a bunch of cute things with like some carrots and bunnies on them. I bought some potpourri that I still have. The loss of this store was such a big void. I did love it so much and I just will always miss it. Next on my list is another very recent closure that I think we all feel the same way about Bed Bath & Beyond. And I'm also going to honorable mention linens and things, which at one time was the competitor to Bed Bath & Beyond. So Bed Bath & Beyond, an amazing home bath and bedding store. This is where we would go for all of our pillows, towels, comforters, new sheet sets, shower curtains, all of that stuff. A lot of people shopped there when their kids were going to college. It was a great place to go to buy all of the things that you need for college dorm, kitchenware. Oh my God, they had all of the name brands. A lot of people registered there for their weddings. Bed Bath & Beyond was amazing. The store was huge. It was just fun to go. Yeah, it was really great. And even like I remember when I first moved in with my boyfriend at the time, now ex-husband, uh, we literally used to go to Bed Bath & Beyond on the weekends, just like the stereotype of like a young couple and buy furniture and things for our house. And oh my God, it was so fun. It's actually a pretty nice little Saturday. We're, uh, we're going to go to Home Depot. Yeah, buy some wallpaper, maybe get some flooring. Stuff like that. Maybe Bed Bath & Beyond. I don't know. I don't know if we'll have enough time. Another store that closed that I'm very sad about is the Disney store. Of course, I have to mention this one. I'm a huge Disney person. I always loved going to the Disney store. Now, I know that technically Disney stores still exist. There is one in Times Square. There's one in the Orlando airport. So I know they are not 100% closed. I'm talking about the classic Disney stores that used to be in all the malls. It was so great, so 90s. I shopped there for a long time. I, it was always a staple in my life to hit the store up whenever I was at the mall back in the 90s when a lot of my friends were getting married and having babies. I always shopped there for a baby shower. I always got a cute little onesie or a cute little sleeper with like the poo design on it, stuffed animals. It was just such a great place to go. For a Disney person also, if you haven't been on a vacation to Disney World in a while. It was a nice way to go kind of get a little Disney fix and see what was new. Whenever there was a new movie out, they always had all of the new merchandise. It was just such a fun store to pop into in a mall staple. So right now, everyone's familiar, obviously, with Barnes & Noble, but there was a time when Barnes & Noble was not the only bookstore. There was a competitor to Barnes & Noble, Border, as many people may remember. I loved Borders and I always felt like it was the superior bookstore of the two. It was kind of like the Burger King and the McDonald's, you know, except in this case, I liked the Burger King better. So going back, like in the pre-Starbucks days, both of these bookstores, Barnes and Nobles and Borders, they had coffee cafes inside, but they were just generic coffee cafes. They weren't a recognized brand like Starbucks or what have you. Once Barnes & Noble got Starbucks. I think that is kind of what pushed them over the edge in as far as like the competition goes. Borders did try to get a national brand coffee cafe in. I can't remember what it was. It was, I just remember the logo was red and it had kind of like a compass nautical motif. I can't remember. Someone tell me if you remember what the cafe was in Borders, but I liked Borders. I thought they were such a great store. It was so cozy and comfy and they had couches. They had a really nice cafe. Their magazine section was huge. I used to go to my nearby location and just hang out there on the weekends. Like I literally would just hang out and sit in the chairs, walk around, sit in the cafe. The one near me used to have sometimes music, like a person playing an acoustic guitar. They actually had like an event schedule where they would have like a flyer that you could pick up and it would list out like the events and the goings on that they were having. They always had something kind of interesting happening and it, not just like an author signing or anything like that, but they actually had like people come in, talk about things like it was, there was just like events. It was just really cool. Their kids section was really cute too. My kids actually even remember going to Borders before it closed and they had this carpet that had like kind of like 
a space galaxy type theme and my kids still to this day remember that carpet in Borders. Actually, the one that was located near me, the building is now something else, but when you drive by it, you can still tell that it used to be a Borders. It was just like so iconic and specific looking. Okay, so now I'm gonna start even going further back, okay? Speaking of malls, I'm from the 80s. I grew up in the heyday of mall culture when malls were like amazing and very different from now. And there were a lot of these specialty stores that don't exist anymore where we used to shop. One of them that was my all-time favorite was Weathervane. And Weathervane was kind of like a Mrs. casual clothing store. Um, trying to think of like what it would be similar to today. I don't know, I guess kind of like that same audience that would shop at Loft maybe, but I feel like it was a little skewed a little younger and it was a little bit more casual. Um, this and Foxmore were like my top stores when I was in high school to shop at and even beyond that. Weathervane was just so stylish, so fashionable, so cool. And I remember we used to get Christmas gifts from Weathervane and eat, like mall stores like this used to give out boxes. Like when you purchased, you could get an actual gift box. Of course, they don't do this anymore. But I remember at Christmas opening up the gift wrap and seeing that Weathervane orange brown logo on the box and just knowing that this was going to be a great gift. And I was so excited. They were just very cool, very trendy, very 80s. And I, I bought a ton of my clothes there I when I was in high school, but also I remember shopping there when I had started working when I was in my 20s and I needed like professional clothes for work. I did buy some things there. They were great for jeans. They were great for accessories. Foxmore, same thing. When I was in junior high and high school, this was my go-to store. I bought things there for every school dance that I went to when I had to go somewhere um, to a party. Oh my God. I had so many cool sweaters, so many cool earrings. I used to buy there to match every sweater. <laughs> they had the puffy scrunchy socks. It was just so cool. And like when you went in there, the girls that worked there were always dressed so stylish and so cool. Another mall store that I loved was O Cotton. If anybody remembers this one, this was so cool and so in style in the eighties. I actually didn't have an O Cotton store located in my area, but I used to get a lot of the teen magazines like YM, Seventeen, and they would have advertisements in the magazines for O Cotton, and I always wished I could shop there. So now, remember, this was back in the day before online ordering, so if you didn't have a physical location of the store near you, and they didn't have a catalog business, there was just no way for you to shop there. So I had a family member that lived in a different state and when we went to visit her, we went to the mall near her, which was Paramus Park. Hello, one of the best 80s malls there ever was and will ever be. <laughs> and they had an Oka in, in their mall and it was just like walking into it, I was just like, ha. Ah. <laughs> I did buy an outfit while I was there and I was just like so thrilled. Got the classic sweatshirt that said O oh, Cotton on it. Loved it, loved it. That was just like one of, that was such a fun store. That was such a fun store. And I'll give honorable mentions also to some of the other 80s stores that I remember, which was um, Barbara Moss, Ups and Downs, Contempo Casuals. Oh my God, what happened to these places? They were so good. <laughs> So good. Um, I'm trying to think what else I, re I used to really like. I also shopped a lot at Petite Sophisticate and Casual Corner. And that's when I was kind of like in my mid-20s and I had like a job and I was looking for work clothes. Um, I really liked Petite Sophisticate and I'm 5'4", so I did shop Petite's a lot. They were owned by the same company as Casual Corner. They had a lot of really cool clothes. Charter Club used to be its own store in the mall also. I don't know if anybody remembers that. They're a brand at Macy's now, but they used to actually have Charter Club stores. Another mall store that I used to really like was This End Up. This was a furniture store, which was in malls, and they kind of specialized in a lot of this like blocky, chunky wood furniture. 
it had a very specific look to it and I never actually bought anything from there but I love this store so I can't really say I was like a customer of it but I love to go in there I think at the time when it was open which was like late 80s early 90s um, for me it wasn't really the kind of furniture I would buy for myself but it was for me it was very aspirational like someday I want to buy my furniture from here and they would have a catalog and every time I walked in I would like walk around the store take the catalog out go home look through the catalog it was just really cool it wasn't really in my price range at the time like I said as a young 20 something I bought a lot of my furniture at Pier 1 <laughs> But this end up was just such a fun store and they had this thing where you could get like the custom fabric and all of their fabrics and the colors were just so fun and beautiful. It was very 90s. So I mentioned the old grand department stores before like the Filene's and the Jordan Marsh and the, how those are closed now. And now we just have Macy's in our area which bought up a lot of the smaller department stores. But Filene's used to actually have another subset to it, which was called Filene's Basement that doesn't exist anymore. And what this was, was it was literally in the basement of the old Filene's in Boston, Massachusetts. And it was where all of the clearance and the markdown merchandise would go. So you would like take the escalator down from Filene's into the basement and everything marked down was there. It was huge. And they had this whole dating system where they would put a date on the merchandise and every week that went by, it would be marked down further and further and further. So if you were so lucky to find something that was like a three, four week date ticket, it was going to be so marked down and so inexpensive. And it was all of the name brand merchandise. This store was so popular, they did end up like building out other locations of it. So it did become a store that you could find in a regular mall or a strip mall. And it was just called Filene's Basement. And it was kind of similar to like a Marshalls or a TJ Maxx. It was just marked down merchandise. But there was nothing like that original one actually in Boston below the Filene's. And then the last one I'll mention, which I believe is kind of a regional store. I know I said I wasn't going to do regional stores, but um, I think this is not, I'm not sure how um, nationwide this is, but it's Christmas Tree Shops. So Christmas Tree Shops, which is basically kind of like a Garden Ridge, this at home store type of place um, where they just have like a lot of different stuff and it's all cheap. It's all like super low priced. So if you want some seasonal home decor, tchotchkes, things for your patio, uh, kids toys, pillows, makeup, shampoo, food, they had like a little department of everything, but everything was like super cheap and discounted and on sale and super low prices. I think um, in other parts of the country, it was known as the and that stores, not really sure, but they used to have a flyer that would come with the weekly circulars either in the newspaper or in your mail and I would be so excited when we got the Christmas tree shops flyer and my sister and I would call each other and be like did you see the flyer and if it was something fun like say fall or Thanksgiving you know they'd have all the pumpkin decor and if it was like summer they would have all the fun summer decor and things for your patio with like lemon theme and watermelon theme and oh we would just have such a blast looking through the flyer and then going there and buying stuff. They also had really good snacks and candies. I always bought tons of like holiday decor there. It would get to be something like Christmas or Valentine's Day or St. Patrick's Day and we'd be like time to go to Christmas tree shops. We have to get some new home decor. So that was a lot of fun. So hopefully people remember that one. So feel free to chime in. Leave me a comment. Do any of these stores like ring a bell to you? Do you have any great memories of shopping at them? Are there other favorite stores that are closed now that I left off my list? Definitely leave a comment and tell me. I'd love to hear about them. If you're new to the channel, I'd love to have you subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. If you like this video, please give it a like. Let me know that you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!